Good day folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're here in the home brewery, which is somewhat derelict at the moment, uh, because the kids are in the house making a racket and uh, I wanted to address a few things about the past week's vlog, particularly the uh, jetty that I've made uh, today before I go down to the pub to watch England play rugby. Uh, so, as you know, I built this jetty against the canal using some scaffolding. It's been an evolution of ideas as we've gone along and uh, fortunately, it's uh, kicked up quite a lot of controversy in the comments and in the pub as well uh, about the legalities and the safety aspect of the whole situation. So the approach that I was coming from initially with the whole project was I wanted to just uh, tidy the bank up and uh, make it look as though from the other side there was somewhere to moor. We weren't going to have uh, authentic mooring there. So I began using the key clamp scaffolding that I had left over from when we made the tables in the brew shed, like originally when we first opened the brew shed. Uh, I put them in the ground. I quickly became uh, aware that I didn't think the material was up to the job. I, I mean, if personal use, yes, maybe, but for maybe the public going on there, no. So I quickly moved towards having a look on eBay for some scaffolding. I found some really cheap scaffolding and poles and boards and what have you. So we went down to Peterborough, as you know if you saw the vlog, and picked up some scaffolding. So already the project had evolved a step uh, bigger than I'd anticipated. So I built the jetty, noting the comments as I was going along and also doing some research into the legalities of the whole thing in terms of the Canal and Rivers Trust, Bassett Law District Council, who are our local council, that's where the planning department is, and also with regard to uh, insurance cover, public liability, that kind of thing. So having dug around um, and spoken to a few people as well, uh, the results, the feedback that I got was the Canal and River Trust uh, if you want to do any work over the canal, you need to apply for it. It's £350 application fee. Um, you, we could uh, have a jetty there, but we wouldn't be allowed to have that jetty supported by the canal in any way. So the canal does not offer foundations, if you like. For any works, it would have to be supported off ground. So off the back of that, I decided to put the poles into the bank. Uh, the Canal and Rivers Trust don't own the bank. It's not a bank as such. It's not a bank as you'd see it. It's actually the the boundary for the property which has fell into disrepair and as it's starting to collapse, it's look, it looks like a bank. There was originally a wall along that boundary which I'll come to in a moment. So, the Canal and River Trust, as long as I'm not on their property, uh, they don't need to be involved in this situation, so we can put them to bed. The next issue is going to be the planning permission from the council. Well, if it's a temporary structure, as would be with scaffolding, I wouldn't need planning consent for it from the Bassett Law District Council because uh, it's not a permanent structure. And then, because we've used scaffolding to build this um, jetty, if you like, that's where we come into the third problem. So I was talking to a good friend and regular client in the pub, uh, Ollie, and he does this kind of stuff for a living. He works in the health and safety industry, he owns his own business, the man knows exactly what he's talking about, and he highlighted a few issues to me with regards to how uh, insurance companies and the courts, particularly uh, civil courts regarding a claim would uh, look at this temporary structure of scaffolding. So with it being a scaffold it means it needs for, for public use it needs to be signed off by a, a ticketed scaffolder essentially of which I am not one and also it needs to be periodically inspected for safety 
Uh, I think he said every seven days, but I'm not sure if that's the industry norm. Uh, because obviously Joe Bloggs could come along and just undo some nuts when nobody's looking on the scaffold. And then, you know, the public goes on there and we have an accident. So that, for me, is kind of what uh, swung it for me. Because I'm not a scaffolder and I've got no intention of paying a scaffolder to come and inspect this periodically. And it doesn't, frankly, even though I've done a nice job of tidying it up, it's still scaffolding poles. And I'm not too keen on the fact that it's scaffolding poles. I really want to have something there that looks a little bit more ornate. So whilst I was putting the board supports on yesterday, which you may have seen on the vlog, I uncovered a lot of the old dilapidated wall foundations which were part of the border. In fact, I used some of what was remaining to anchor the scaffold uh, to the bank to prevent it from slipping down into the canal as such. So what I'm going to do is leave that scaffolding in place but prevent access on it for now and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to restore the old wall that was there. So we're going to remove all the spent soil and what have you. We're going to find the foundation. We're going to patch up and repair what's missing. And then we're going to rebuild that uh, nine inch wall. It was a nine inch wall originally that would have ran the full width of the boundary in front of the canal at the end of the beer garden. And then once we've repaired that brick wall, that nine inch brick wall, I'm going to go ahead and along with the gate for the side of the uh, dray run, manufacture some iron railing, some fencing, some steel fencing, and we're going to sit that on top of the on top of the wall, giving us a better view uh, at the canal from in the beer garden, and then also from the other side of the canal. What I want to do is uh, put the HB logo into the metal fencing. So from the other side you can see every single uh, metal fence panel, let's say that they're uh, a metre tall and maybe two metres long and smack bang in the middle there'll be a big circle with HB out of, I think I'm probably going to try and bend some letters out of some flat bar, some steel flat bar and weld it in. So I think it'll be uh, unique, it'll look much better than the scaffolding from the other side of the bank. It will remove uh, the possibility of a lawsuit against me for people going on the scaffolding. It will remove the possibility of the Canal and Rivers Trust getting involved. It will remove the necessary uh, the need for any planning permission should there be any. Because let's remember, I'm just reinstalling the original boundary. Now, it did have iron railings on it, believe it or not, but they were just the normal picket style flat topped iron railings. This time round, we're going to improve upon that, as I said, with the HB logo in there. And we'll maybe put some type of uh, birdcage balustrade along there as well. All very much still on the, uh, on the drawing board. Nothing, I've not sketched anything out yet apart from the main gate. But now we're going to turn this into a bit more of an engineering project. And it's going to be good for the vlog as well. I mean, come on. It means more... Uh, more footage for us, more content for the for the viewers and I've never built uh, iron railings before apart from that you, well you've seen what I've welded in the past a brewery so I think an iron railing or two should be within my grasp and uh, once we've done that we've got it up in position I think it's going to look fantastic from both sides of uh, of the boundary and of course it's going to be an asset to the pre to the property premises property uh, once it's done so yet again my landlord as somebody said in the comments the other week is going to win the tenant lottery with uh, with this i won't be charging the landlord for it or asking for any input because i'm doing this off my own back and i'm basically improving the environment for my customers and also when we're long gone and Harrison's Brewery is no more, God forbid, those HB logos on that fencing will remain there for decades to come, I'm sure, if I build it right. So this is a video that I did not want to make this weekend, 
but on reflection and the kind words from people who have pointed me in the right direction on the internet, Tony Leach gave me quite a lot of advice. We've also had lots of input from Schnuz as well and several other people that uh, have called out saying that would be a big no-no where I'm from in the States, in Canada, wherever it is. So I'm not the kind of person to uh, be headstrong and shrug off this constructive criticism. So instead I've grasped it, I've faced what I now consider to be my mistake head on and we're going to do our best to rectify it. So the scaffolding will remain until this project's complete, but once it's done we'll be taking it away and hopefully in a, in a month's time or so we'll have a fantastic new boundary uh, and a great looking logo filled fence for the brew shed. So thanks for watching folks, uh, tomorrow I will be going for some breakfast with Stu, Gemma and the kids, soak up a little bit of the beer from today watching England play rugby, hope they do well. Uh, I'm also watching it with a friend of mine, uh, Enzo, Vincent, Vincent Civitenzo, or I can't ever say his name, <laughs> he'll laugh at that if he watches this, uh, and he's an Italian as well, Italian, Anglo-Italian, so he's going to be on the fence a little bit, but we're going to go down there, I'm taking some food, we're going to have a really good afternoon watching the rugby, and then tomorrow we'll go to uh, Dukeries Garden Centre again where we went last week, have a breakfast with the brother, and also pick up some of the bedding so we can start to dress that uh, that border in the beer garden a little bit more ready for summer time. It's going to look fantastic out there folks. So I hope you join me on the next episode of the vlog and until then thanks for watching.